Our tour starts on Avenue C, also known as Loisaida Avenue. My uncle told me when I first visited the city that Loisaida is actually a lexicon that came from the mince pronunciation of Lower East Side with a Spanish accent. In fact, much of this area of Alphabet City has been filled with Puerto Ricans, a group that emigrated en masse to NYC in the 1940s, nurtured by New Deal legislation which helped lower income residents maintain decent standards of living and support. Our first stop on the tour is Haven Plaza. Haven Plaza is an apartment complex that houses many Puerto Rican families that have lived here for decades. The area around Haven Plaza has a lot of small businesses and convenience stores, traditionally found in largely Puerto Rican neighborhoods, such as those across the street. However, gentrification seems to be slowly creeping onto the block between 11th and 12th Street as nicer restaurants and restored facades of apartment buildings begin to pop up. A lot of this area draws its vibrancy not only from its residents, but also from its art. On the corner of 12th Street, a new mural appears every couple of months or so. Such art often shows pride in being from the Lower East Side or pride in the Latino and Puerto Rican culture. As we reach 14th Street, we can see how much the tenement building on the left has changed since this photograph was taken in 1939. This building is on the cusp of gentrified properties in this area and is the beginning of the shift in atmosphere along 14th Street and Avenue C. Across the street, we see another relic of New Deal legislation, Stuyvesant Town. Planned by Robert Moses in the 1940s and approved by Mayor LaGuardia, Stuyvesant Town was the first housing project of its kind, using public property to build a privately funded building. Unlike the rest of this micro-neighborhood, Stuyvesant Town is removed from the grid structure, followed by a majority of the city. Moses chose the spot for this major project in urban renewal, knocking down an old neighborhood and displacing thousands of families. It appears displacement seems to be a trend as communities shift and change in the city. When Tishman Spire bought Stuyvesant Town in 2006, it wanted to make it an apartment complex with amenities to attract the growing numbers of young professionals in the city. This threatened many of the middle-class families that had been living in Stuyvesant Town for years, and several legal battles occurred as Tishman Spire used aggressive tactics to out some rent-subsidized tenants. Oval Kids, our fourth formal stop on the walking tour, is the daycare center for Stuyvesant Town, made to attract the new demographic Tishman Spire wanted, which consisted of young working professionals and families. By attracting new tenants to the building, Tishman Spire could make more profit off of their higher rents than tenants with subsidized housing. Our final stop is at the heart of Stuyvesant Town, the Oval. In addition to this picturesque fountain, Tishman Spire created community exclusive activities for tenants, such as farmers markets around the Oval. Though Tishman Spire had to sell the property back to its creditors in 2010, they made a lasting mark on Stuyvesant Town, which continues to attract this newer demographic of tenants. So where do we go from here? As we can see from this tour, the way the land is used and who is allowed to occupy it relies on who owns it, which in turn relies on economic and political aspects. What is most important to consider after walking such a short distance and seeing two different worlds is how to keep each of these vibrant areas filled with the people who give it a unique life.